Okay. I'm eating a pig, I know. Cheerios, they're getting about a fucking handful out of, out of a jar. Cheerios, they're fucking good. Um, anyway, the second video I wanted to talk about is about class warfare. I normally don't get political on here because politics gets people heated worse than anything else in the world. Okay? You don't talk about religion and politics at a bar, so YouTube is kind of like a big bar. And guys like Pete, the Dan Hogg, and the potato chips. And I love Pete. Um, so, you don't talk about religion and politics, but this is not politics so much as it's sociology. Okay? I'm gonna close that fucking window. Hold on a minute. Okay, close the window. Come on, any fucking noise outside. Okay, class warfare. For those who don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, yeah, I'm a pig. I'm dusting my fucking pants. Class warfare. For those who don't know what I'm talking about, is when we have different classes of people. Now, obviously, the United States of America does not give titles of nobility, but there's the rich, there's the poor, there's the upper middle class, there's the lower middle class. And there's the middle, middle class. So that shit three times fast. And class warfare is when one group antagonizes you to taunt the other. And taunt and harass. They say, this group is the fucking enemy. Get them. Now, communism. Yes, we're going to talk about the C word. Communism is when the poor people get sick of the rich people and overthrow them. And they appoint a government that shares everything. In other words, the government takes their tax money, keeps it for themselves, and gives the poor people whatever's left over. And in a communist country, everybody is poor, the president is rich, and don't even bother opening your fucking mouth. That's how communism works. And communism happens because the poor get sick of the rich and overthrow them. Which brings us to Tsar Nicholas. I am very, very into history. I love history. Tsar Nicholas of Russia, you know, Alex, Alex, no, 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 what the fuck, Alex. Um, Anastasia's father. Okay. Her father was the worst Tsar in Russian history. Her father was the absolute ruler of Russia. There were no political parties, there was no voting. Now, in an era where there were not that many rich guys, now they've got rich celebrities, celebrities make $20 million a movie. Celebrities make $10 million a record album. Celebrities make $20,000 a base, you know, $20 million a baseball season. Celebrities get shit-faced drunk on reality TV and make a billion fucking dollars, and, okay? People win the lottery get $500 million in Powerball. $500 million, $30 million in Powerball. There were not a lot of rich people back then. And those guys, the world rich, were like fucking uber rich. Tsar Nicholas was the Tsar of Russia and was the richest man in the world. He would be the equivalent of Bill Gates or Warren Buffett today. And his head was even more far up his ass. Yes. Tsar Nicholas should not have given his people everything they wanted for free. But Tsar Nicholas could have used his own personal funding to give money to the hospitals, maybe even start some building projects like President Roosevelt did a generation later in America. Build roads. Give the people money to work and build roads. Even if the road goes nowhere, just build it, pay them money. Yes, they're living off the government, but they have a paycheck. And then World War I came around and Tsar Nicholas was devastated in World War I. Devastated. They had one rifle for every three guys. No, I'm sorry. They had one rifle for every 20 guys. And they would tell the guys, listen, when the guy with the rifle gets killed, pick the rifle up and use it. So they had three bullets and no rifles. 
And if the guy next to you got killed with a rifle, take his rifle and use it until you get killed. And they were fucking decimated in World War One. World War One, Russia fought, and World War Two, Russia fought for the Allies, the Americans, the British. They were decimated. So you had World War One, which was not Tsar Nicholas's fault. You had the Russians living in poverty, which was his fault to a degree because he, they were living in poverty, and he was living lavishly. He could have sold a couple of his palaces because he's the ruler. He's supposed to help them. But he didn't do anything to help them. And he wasn't evil, he was just fucking stupid. And he was not in touch with the people. One day he was out of town and a bunch of protesters came to talk to him. And the soldiers fired on them. He wasn't even home at the time, but the soldiers worked for him. And they fired on the crowd, therefore the crowd blamed him. Guilty by association. The people decided to get rid of him. They captured him. He was on a train. They, they stopped the train, came on board and said abdicate. Now, told him to abdicate. They took him, his wife, his four daughters, his son, who was heir to the throne, his servants, a few of them, kept them hostage for about 18 months, this place, that place, this place, that place. And then the government eventually said, fuck this. They lured him to a basement and they shot them all death, to death. And yes, they all did die, you fucking conspiracy theorists. Anastasia is dead. They found her body. And then the Soviet Union took over. The Soviet Union, in their infinite wisdom, gave about 100 million AK-47s to terrorists and rebels. The Soviet Union, and those AK-47s still kill American soldiers today. The Soviet Union decided to annex other nations to terrorize people, to, to put the world at... In, in jeopardy for about 70 something years. So what happens when you have class warfare is the people revolt and they put some scumbag communist in charge. Or worse yet, Hitler. You know, Hitler did Hitler won a legal election. Well, I think he won. Anyway. No, fuck no, Hitler was Hitler was a little different. Anyway, that's the problem of class warfare. Let me check my time. Seven minutes, I got plenty of time. And I'm making this video because I want to tell Americans to shut the fuck up and to not get the fuck off with the class warfare. Okay? Yes, America, rich people in this country, they could pay more money in taxes. But understand this. Most rich people hire poor people to work for them. And yeah, they could give them a little more money. I work for corporations that make shit. You know, ugh. But... Rich people create jobs. You either work for a rich person or a rich corporation. Okay. And those people pay taxes. You work for... I'm sorry. The rich people put the most money into the economy. They buy Rolls Royces. They buy corporate jets. They buy mansions. They buy boats. They pay taxes on that. People are hired to build a boat. People are hired to build the Rolls Royce. People are hired to fly the corporate jet. The corporate jet needs gasoline. Gasoline costs money, money in the economy. So rich people could pay more in taxes, but think about how much money they give in donations to charities. Not all in do, but some do. Think about how much money they pump into the economy when they hire people. So blaming the rich isn't gonna work. Also, you ever watch Eat Your Hollywood Story? There was an episode, it was two hours long, Curse of the Lottery. And another episode, Curse of the Lottery 2, was one hour long. Curse of the Lottery was fools that win the lottery. You have fools that can't manage money. So they win the lottery. And when they win the lottery, their problems are solved. Wrong. When they win the lottery, they waste more fucking money. So basically when you say, when the government comes out and says we should ask the rich to pay more money in taxes or we should raise taxes, we need to raise taxes. Here's what the government is saying. We waste billions of dollars a day. Not a week, not a year, a day. We, the government, waste billions of dollars a day. The problem is you're not paying enough money. So if you give us more money, our problem will be solved. No. We waste billions of dollars a day. And because we don't know how to manage our money, we're going to blame you. 
And we want you to give us more money. That way we have more money to waste. Yes. That's what happens. Ronald Reagan once said, I forget his exact words, God bless him. He said, the government finds a way to use the taxpayer money. So if the government raises your taxes, the government will find a way to pay for it. Use the taxes. Foolishly or not. Ronald Reagan also said, God save him. The problem isn't people pay too much, people pay too little taxes. The problem is the government spends too much. Yes. Now you also have to understand the hypocrisy in this country. Okay? People in this country, one person in particular, they won't be mentioned, um, spent the past two and a half years talking about how rich people are destroying the country. Okay? Rich people need to pay more money in taxes. This is the fault of the rich. That person later went to Chicago, Illinois, rented a ballroom which cost $40,000 a night, charged people $35,800 for an admission ticket for his birthday party, and charged people an additional $10,000 for an autograph picture. Now, who can afford to pay $10,000 for an autograph picture? Who can, excuse me, who can afford to pay $35,800 $35, on a meal, on a one night dinner trip? One night dinner. The poor people? No. So the person that is telling you that rich people are the problem is themselves rich and is themselves hanging out with rich people. That person also took um, a trip to Martha's Vineyard. That person is there now. And that person took a taxpayer funded jet to Martha's Vineyard. His wife took one taxpayer funded jet to Martha's Vineyard with one taxpayer funded escort. Then he took an additional taxpayer funded jet to Martha's Vineyard with an additional taxpayer funded armed escort. But rich people are the problem, okay. Now, civility, okay. This is America, let me check my time again. In case you don't know that, this is America. A lot of guys forgot this is America. You know what, I'm gonna kill it at 1220, kill.